Quantum Break. Let's have a little chat, Peter Brown. Yeah. Let's have a chat about Quantum Break. Yeah. Uh, six out of ten on GameSpot.com. Six out of ten. Two out of five on GiantBomb.com. Two out of five. Eight out of ten <laughs> on IGN. 8.5 on Polygon and Game Informer. Jim Sterling as well. Digital Spy. Give it a sweet five out of five. Really? Um, yeah. I, I want to talk about this because I've been playing Quantum Break for the past couple of weeks and... When your review was going through QA, I was like, yep, yep, totally. And like talking to Jeff about it, he was like, I think probably a bit more down on the combat. But he like, was, yeah. yeah. Otherwise, it was like, yep, that, that seems about right. And then I saw, and I know like our scale isn't as, we, we tend to use a lot more of it than the m- m- most sites. But when I saw all the other reviews, I was like, wow, okay. I, yeah, I don't want to like cast any like, any negative, you know, opinions towards any of those other reviewers, because they truly like the game that much cool. But yeah. yeah, I was just, it was like, did I play a different game? <laughs> did I did I miss something here? Uh, but yeah, I, I be, people are having very different reactions yeah. to this. And it's interesting to me that, like I, I had spoken to Jeff a little bit about his opinion, but, mm. it was, but it was mostly like the day before publishing the review, because I was like, I'm really anxious. People are going to get really upset with me. And I just need to know, are you in line with me? Because if you're mm. not, then I should be anxious. But yeah. he was like, no, I'm not. Like, okay, I'm not alone. But then it turns out we are alone. <laughs> me and him are the two that are the outliers and we work in the same building. And uh, I don't, I don't know what people see in this game. Like they, a lot of people described the similar, same problems that I had with it. Mm. Which are, which are oh. like, <laughs> let's get into it a little bit for context uh, yeah. for other people I, I, I don't want to just rattle off a list it deserves yeah. more explanation um, so where would you like me to begin pick a <laughs> pick let's an aspect t- of the game and I will tear it to bits okay let's talk about <laughs> the most the most important thing about the game which is the movement combat moment to moment gameplay in terms of like what you're actually doing and controlling the main character yes movement feels like you've got 20 pound weights on each one of your feet or maybe like you're going through mud maybe mm. that's more accurate it is slow it is unresponsive it is loose and you know you're getting into combat scenarios where yeah you have these time powers that help you uh you know move around quickly get uh, advantages on the battlefield and, and stuff like that but at the same time there are moments when that's taken away from you mm. and you have to resort to using just your basic mobility and it, it just becomes so clear at that point that something is missing and that's something that's missing extends to when you take cover like this is a game that yeah maybe you don't want to call it a cover shooter but you're lying to yourself because yeah. anytime you go up to anything that is waist high, you duck behind it automatically, aka you take cover. Mm. Um, like most of the engagements in this game yeah. involve you taking cover or if not running from cover to cover. Like it is right. absolutely a cover. Right. It's imperative because the only way to recharge your, your time abilities, which allow you to do various things, mm. is to take a break and let them, re- you know, it's a cooldown timer, that kind of thing. Mm. So, you know, and your health recharges as well. Same thing. So you just, you go hide, you get some health back, you get your powers back and you keep going. Um, but when you can't use your powers and you want to use your gun from cover, you don't have, you don't have the ability to blind fire. Yeah. You have to stand up no matter what to fire your weapon, (laughs) therefore exposing yourself. I, I'm going to pull no punches here. It is ridiculously stupid that that was a design decision that made it into this game. And like, I remember, I remember you said it to me, and I thought, oh, this never came up for me. And then later that day, three times, somebody flanked me, and I couldn't just shoot them crouching. I had to stand up and let eight people shoot at me. It was, I like, it was maddening. I don't even want to hear the argument that this game isn't designed to be a shooter, mm. because then why the hell do I have guns, and why the hell am I forced to use them at some point? And I also thought that happened to me way before I got any of the other powers, which kind of mitigate that, like the ability to like run fast yeah, into no, a different but, area. Yeah, no, but dude, later in the game, there are these machines that literally strip you of your powers. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not even that you don't have access to new things. You don't have anything. You got nothing mm. but your guns and the fact that you have to get shot just to shoot somebody when you're trying to protect yourself. And I'm totally with you on the movement and like even the aiming. Everything about it just feels like, you know that kill zone thing? That's like the easiest yeah. delta is that people say like kill zone, you felt very heavy and the aiming was yeah. was heavy or whatever. Um, I like actually, for whatever reason, I actually was fine with kill zone. I was fine with Grand Theft Auto 4, which is another one that people say. Kill zone 3 was pretty good. <laughs> right? <laughs> but this one was something about, it just feels, yeah, it does yeah. not feel like, oh, this was meant to be a shooter first. No, it's, it's, it's well, yeah, I mean, I don't think it is necessarily, but right. there's a, that's a very strong component of it and uh the aim assist feature is turned on by default and i yeah. turned it off and Me i was too. like no i need it mm. like i'm ineffective without it and i don't think it's because of me like i feel like it's because like the game presents you with scenarios with a certain level of stress and threat you have to react within a certain amount of time and this game just doesn't really afford you the ability to do so with any amount of skill yeah you, so 
at that point, the auto aim just becomes like a thing you need. Mm. And the, the the powers themselves, although like you can sort of guess what they are. There's like a bubble shield, bullet shot, so you regenerate. There's one that like stops them in a time bubble, so that yeah. you can load them full of bullets. But like none of they all seem disparate. Like none of them connect to each other, or you can't really chain them in any sort of interesting way. I so I I think Jeff described a similar thing to mm. me, but I I kind of disagree. Like I, I found a really good rhythm during combat. Um, while you can upgrade your powers and the differences aren't incredibly noticeable, uh, when it comes to the moment-to-moment -moment stuff of chaining different moves together, being able to increase the frequency with which you use an ability during a, a charge uh, made a difference for me. So I was able to, you know, zip across the field, cap a time shield, uh, cast a time shield, you know, put a bubble out there, shoot that guy when my shield ran out, zip somewhere else behind cover, and then, you know, just kind of like mix those abilities together. And yeah. I... I found that to be pretty fun. The, the combat is pretty easy. Hmm. Your powers are, they make you very OP. The game only goes so far as to introduce, you know, big bad guys that have a weak point in their back. Yeah. Um, <laughs> which and are, they're not that difficult to take down. They're not that difficult to take down, but their, their AI shots. is... Weak points glow. <laughs> they don't, but they're, they're yellow. They're bright yellow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. And they have the same uh, Monarch logo on absolutely everything in this video. Yeah. It is fun. Yeah, literally everything is a giant <laughs> logo um, on yeah. it. <laughs> We're the bad guys. I know, Thanks. Totally, cool. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Even uh, the security guards have like these hoodies with M like sewn into yeah, them. Yeah, like what the hell? I don't know, maybe we're getting nitpicky here, but like, uh, no, we're this? not. No, Dude, we're not. Like, that, that's hor That's. Dude, come on. No, that's awful. <laughs> it's, it's, like, not, it's not the real world. They're trying to present this really dramatic situation set in the real world where people actually have real life problems yeah. that are a part of the grander struggle in this fantasy. And then they have goofy henchmen. It's just like, yeah, just pull you right out of the experience. So the, the other, like, like the, sort of the main, like, or the main dramatic pull in this game, I'm not sure if we should talk about this necessarily, is the fact, like, that time is going to end. For one reason or another, it's kind of a, it, like, I, I never felt worried the time was going to end at any stage during this game. The op <laughs> the, I know, it's just, yeah, I know. There's like a spoiler. I, the, it's literally the first thing that happens in the game. So let's talk, talk about it. But like, even then, like the main thing you should be worried about in this game is stripped gets away thrown out the window, yeah. like almost yes. immediately. Yes, I, at, at no point did I have any investment of whatever dread was being communicated to me on screen by the characters. Yeah. It felt so contrived. In fact, <laughs> there was one part of, uh, actually where the uh, there was so much emotion out of the character because he was about to like leave this mission we'd done, and he got up, to, he got went up to like a valet's like key, yeah, like you know where all puts all the keys, and he's like, yeah, and he's like <laughs> valet box every car thief's dream and he like picks one, he's like yeah, <laughs> and like gets in a Ferrari or whatever and drives off, and it's like. Dude, you just murdered a bunch right. of people, and also, isn't time about to end? Like, why are you just being this like cool cat? Yeah, no, I mean, and yeah, I guess I it ties back with the, the uncharted thing we so, talked about. <laughs> so the th the thing about this is, what I want to talk about is that like obviously people rated the game differently, right? Yes, they and did. I'm just interested why because it's so broadly different. And to me, this is a game that is very like I'm right with you where it is fine. It is. The main reason I think that it comes off as more than fine is that it's really well presented. Oh, yeah. Like, it looks great. One of the best looking games of the year. And, like, it's got, you know, decent, like, voice act, even though, like, the scripting isn't particularly great. There's something, right. like, you know, qualitative, qualitative, qualitatively, <laughs> whatever, <laughs> good about it. It just, it feels like money's been pumped into it and effort has been played. Yeah. Put in, even if it hasn't resulted in something great. So, like, even the TV show, it's kind of this plodding, ridiculous mess, but I kind of love it because it's so weird. Like, I love it because it's, and I, I loved it less every time I had to watch an episode. Yeah. I'll say that. And yeah. It's less than this interesting, and none of the characters seem to have anything to do with the main story, really, in any way. But, I feel like a lot of people rated it really well because it looks nice. Like it's because it comes across as a game with a big budget and lots of like yeah, I know I noticed effort a lot. behind it. Even if it's actually just like a you know it's right. a, not a well polished turret. I don't want to say that it's a fine game, but it's not it's not a great game by any means. No, it feels like a game that came out ten years ago. Yeah, I mean I I saw people dumping on the game, dumping on the show, you know, calling them middling, hmm. and then me like, but oh man. I've never seen a game do something like this before. <laughs> and that and that influenced their assessment. And you know, if that actually made them enjoy the experience more, that's totally fair. Hmm. I it's the same reason I can't give a game kudos just for being in VR. You know, it's there are doing something novel is only good when it's put to good use. Hmm. And here I don't think it was put to good use. Did you like Alan Wake? I didn't play Alan Wake. Okay. So I really liked Alan Wake. Yeah. 
because it kind of struck this interesting narrative like chord with me and I was like oh okay like I'm in, I'm in with this guy like it's kind of crazy what's happening and it's cleverly written and all this and like this feels like they tried to take the sort of charming you know nuanced storytelling of Alan Wake and apply it to like a mainstream audience with more CSI style yeah. television stuff and it's it's just like not there's, soulless there's it's just no not nuance charming. it's basically no. like guess what, time is in play yeah. and weird stuff's going to happen and you're not really going to know what's now or later or the before. Go have fun. Like, but that's that's kind of the extent of it. Like, It's all this this doubling back on what you thought you knew because time travel is a thing. Yeah. Oh, am I completely wrong or does the whole time broken thing also feel like a massive MacGuffin in that like it never actually right. makes any... Like, there's no through line. Like, It just seems to be like at certain points time, oh, time did something and yeah. then it's just to serve the narrative. Like, yeah. I don't feel at all like, I feel like somebody's going to take this story and break it down and be like, none of this has any consistency. <laughs> like, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe loads of thought went into it. But even now, I don't, like, I have no, because I haven't completed it yet. I'm right. I'm yeah. near enough the end. But like, I feel like there's, I don't have any clue what the rules of this world are. They it's just like, press Y here to make right. the bridge go back so you can walk across it. But oh, like, God. why can't I do that everywhere then? Why does it only happen in places which are part of your platforming thing? Why, like it's, why can you only use your powers in some sections but not others? There were hmm. times where I was in an environment looking for a clue and it was like, okay, the room is so big and I walk so slow, I'd love to zip over there. Oh, I can't use my powers now? Not because oh, really? there's a device like in combat that, that negates <laughs> it. The game just decides, yeah, you don't need those right now. We want you to walk over there and we want you to move slow enough mm. that you notice the other items in the environment. And it's so sad that a game which takes such a... And I th feel like it sounds like we're being very critical, but we are. we're also... We are, yeah. <laughs> and, and I get, yeah, I guess it, it just feels like it's kind of a missed opportunity. Is that the other thing about this game that feels crazy old? That, like, how can you have this many pick like a narrative objects in a world that are just pages and pages of text yeah i it, like it, oh gosh the story does not at least for me it did not warrant the amount of time that it required for me to like get the finer details of the characters and their plot mm. arcs in the story it was to me just a ham-fisted way to take the characters from the show and put their stories into the game mm. you know apart from any sort of social or professional connections that they had to the main characters. Like you'd find an email from the dude that's only in the show and it's forever long. You yeah. Know? And you read one and you're like, okay, that was kind of interesting. Oh, geez, there's like 10 more in this room. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think I'm going to move on. I think I'm going to walk away from that. Yeah. But then I talked to some people who were telling me like, oh, did you find this one thing? Oh, it was great. And it's like, I, I believe it. I wish I had found that, but it got lost in a sea of dribble. Yeah. I thought. I also, I'm a big fan of the Remedy TV show stuff they do. Yeah. And the stuff in this one just wasn't. I found like three of them so far, I think. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's just not great either. It's kind of like, oh, you guys are better than this, baby. But yeah, and I, and I would really like to talk about the distribution of activities as I constantly refer to it as. So this game is a TV show. This game is combat. This mm -hmm. game is narrative sequences. And it is platforming. Yes. And it's basically all divided evenly. Hmm. So the one thing in the game that it does incredibly well is, well, not, maybe not incredibly well. The one thing the game does well is combat. Right. Second to that is the, sort I agree. Of the, yeah. the, the, the storytelling stuff that happens b between action sequences hmm. when you're walking with the character from one point to another. And even though you're not doing anything special, you're just walking. I found that to be a good break to just sort of like take in some exposition and dialogue yeah. between these characters. Very well produced those sections as well. Like there's yeah. a reason why they showed basically that's all they ever showed in previews right. when they were showing it at events for years. Right. And that stuff is cool. Yeah. But then, you know, you expect, okay, I just got through this story. I'm ready for more action. And then you got to do some platforming. And it's like, mm. oh, you got to find the dumpster to climb onto the roof, to jump over to the next roof, to cl climb down the ladder, mm. you know. And make it, time go backwards before the building was built. Walk in and make time go forward. Done. Yeah, but you only have five <laughs> seconds to do it and you have to wrestle with the horrible mobility controls to mm. get the thing done in time. But it's, all, it's also all scripted, so you can only climb certain objects, yeah. right? Yeah. Even though there's something that would make your path simpler yeah. to complete. No, th this game is screwed up, man. Like, yeah. There, there's one thing where you had to rewind time to make a van back yes. out of a tunnel. So this, I was, when you said that, I literally <laughs> thought there's a part where, yeah, I want to just jump on the van. But yeah. no, I have you to do this whole thing to make there it. There is a van that is seven feet tall. You are a freaking time <laughs> wizard. You've done. You've climbed on top of things taller than that in the game. You can't just climb up on the van. You have to reverse time so it can back up, so you can jump off of a roof to get on top of it. Yeah. Like illogical BS. I. I when a game does stuff like that, it, it to me it assaults my intelligence. Right. Yeah. And it assaults my time because it's like. 
look, I am not here to do this basic shit. Yeah. But like, <laughs> give me some, give me some, like, make me feel like you understand what makes a good game. Mm. Don't pad it out with things that nobody wants to do and nobody will believe is like a thing that has to be handled in that way. Yeah. It's, just, it's so padded with BS. Did you say insult your intelligence or assault your intelligence? I said that's assault. Good. I was just, yeah, that's a much more powerful <laughs> phrase. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good. Seriously. So, <laughs> it's like a writer or something. So if people want to see the full review, Alan Wake, or Alan Wake, sorry, Quantum Break <laughs> is out today. Quantum Wake. Quantum Look. Wake, yeah. Uh, uh, Quantum Break is out today. I, uh, I think it's going to be very interesting to see what, like, people who buy it. I'm looking at Metacritic, user of user, mostly 10. Really? Yeah. Well, like mm. that's, I know it's like been out for like six hours. Well, that's but. Xbox One owners who right. this is like one of their only sort of big games is coming right. out, and it does look really good on Xbox One. Yeah, like for all the complain, you know, complaints, complaints we have. And then the PC version, that's yeah. You know, the game looks great. Mm. It has some good moments, both Shoot, for some the of the story and the cool. gameplay. Yeah. yeah, but like the the mesh that holds it all together is fractured yeah. in far too many places. It's just unreliable. It's a very widely linear game. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> listen, Peter. The only thing I want to know: uh, Are there and what is the quality of the time puns in the game? Oh, no. Oh, I don't remember any. There's lots. Because really, lots, there, there ought to be. Yeah. Uh, we, do they break actually, the fourth wall and like wink at the camera? Because <laughs> I don't remember any of that. We're they running do, out of time. They Maybe literally was, do that all the time. Oh, man. There's but like, I'm not sure if they mean it half the time. There's one more point we have to address. Okay. <laughs> the last fact last that, point. Other than time puns. The fact that this game is designed to provide multiple paths for you to pursue and thus encourage you to replay the game. Yeah. The things that change are so minor yeah. that again, it's like an insult to like you game, as a person. Game like, has the same ending no matter what. Game it, yeah. Some characters are swapped out. Some, yeah, but like, none of it, yeah, but none of it happen. ties into like your story yeah. for the most part. It, it's just, oh, it's just trite differences that mean nothing. So there you go. Yeah. Quantum Break, six out of town on GameSpot.com. Check out the review. It's a real fair game. One. Real fair. Super fair. <laughs> it's a super fair game. Uh, if you've played it yourself, let us, and time has passed, and you haven't just burned through it in your fanboy, let us know what you think uh, in the comments below. Uh, but yeah, very interesting to see see what the, the fallout will be from this one. 